Guitar practice session 92124. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I go over whatever I think I need to learn at any given time. First going through the practice session, then providing a recap so that you know what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap. Hoping the practice sessions help me to provide a routine for myself. Also verbalize what it is I'm trying to learn, which will better get it in my mind. Possibly provide information to others that could be useful if they're working on similar things. Also possibly providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to try to learn and get in my mind the things I'm trying to learn and get in our mind. This practice session, the way it's set up, might be a little bit different than others in that I'm going to try to get everything going the same way, which might be more useful for certain types of people like myself that I like to have everything kind of lined up going the same way in that I'm going to be using my fretboard in Excel, having the top string, the low string on the top as though I'm sitting behind the guitar. So it will match what I'm looking at from the perspective of the guitar from behind it. I'll also turn around my guitar for at least much of the presentation. So it looks like I'm left handed so that you can basically visualize what I'm doing as though it's your hand on the on the guitar everything going top to bottom left to right in the same uh, direction now we're going to be looking then this time at the major scale you can call that in modes it would be called uh, the ionian mode i am working on orientating myself around the ionian mode which i think most everybody does in western music remembering that all of these modes are kind of connected like a fractal picture so you can think of it almost from a physics standpoint. I've been watching physics stuff. So, and the idea would be there's no there's no place in the universe in physics that's special, right? It's all a matter of perspective. But when we're trying to measure things, of course, we're going to measure from a per specific point. So obviously, when we're thinking about measuring things in the universe, we're going to have the point be Earth as our focal point, because that's going to orientate ourselves as we think about the planets and whatnot and so on, even though everything's kind of connected and possibly more of a fractal uh, type of uh, situation. Similarly here, all of the modes are connected together. You can derive all of the modes from the other modes. But in Western music, we've kind of just picked the major scale as our, in essence, reference point. And therefore, I'm going to name all of the other modes with absolute numbering systems that are tied to the major scale. So even when I look at the other modes, I can look at the, the first through the seventh positions related to those modes, which will change relative to the mode, but keep the the numbering system as it relates to our major key, our, our measuring focus of the major scale, I think that's quite useful, which means that as we go through the, the major positions, it's really nice to be able to look at and concentrate on the, the positions and the numbering system of the modes related to those positions, the one, four, five being our major chords, which will be our major modes, and, and the two, three, six being the minors, the Locrian kind of like being a funny minor because it has that minor third, but also the flat fifth uh, within it. So that's going to be that. And then we'll also want to really focus on these intervals because I want to we want to basically memorize these intervals, which should be fairly easy to do in terms of the names of the intervals because they're all going to be either perfect or major because the intervals were named in essence after the major scale and then use that as a comparison to all other modes, especially the major modes, which are going to be the one, four, five, the Ionian, Lydian, and uh, the Mixolydian. Now, I'm also looking at the shape, and I'm trying to find different ways to, to break up the guitar into bits. And the classical way to do that is like a caged system or try to break it out into four to five uh, uh, intervals or four to five frets is the word I'm trying to look for. And... So we'll do that here. And so I'm going to name this what I would call position number two. You can also name it after the cage system and we'll get into different stuff there. Now, also note that it's useful to break out the, the shapes within this shape so that you don't have to go to the top of the shape every time to play it all the way down through the six strings. If you want to find out like what this note is in the shape, for example. So I've been chunking it out into different components and I've seen other people do this and I've seen other conventions on how to do that. You can 
come up with your own conventions. And I think it's useful to do that because then you can come up with your own like story or thought process around it. So this is a convention that I've seen other people do and I'm copying it here, which is basically going to be you have the square and then the double stop and then the double stop and the square and then you've got this two notes per string and then it's back to the square and the double stop. That's a useful way to to see to envision the the chunking of these shapes and it works for any mode because it has all seven notes in it. Uh, however, uh, and it, what does it do? R the guitar, by the way, is broken out into five strings in essence, and then it has the six, which is a repeated string. So you can kind of think of the guitar as a five stringed instrument in some ways when you think about these shapes. And if you think about how we're breaking out that shape, you have a two string chunk and then a two string chunk and then a one string chunk. And then we're back to the two string chunk, which is part of this one. So, so the five unique strings are broken out between two, two, one, a two, two, one breakout, two strings, two strings, and then one string. Uh, we, but the pentatonic shape, when I look at it in terms of the pentatonic, we usually break it out into what I would call this hamburger shape, which has been broken into two because of the kink in the tuning. But if there was no kink in the tuning, it would just be this one three string shape. And then what I would call the meat of the, uh, what I would call then the barbell shape, this shape right here. And so when, so that means that when oftentimes it makes, and that makes perfect sense to look at the pentatonic, if you break it down into its core shapes, we've broken it down into a three string shape and a two string shape, as opposed to what we did on the major scale, which is a two string, two string, one string. So they don't lay on top of each other purpose perfectly is the problem. A lot of people actually envision the guitar from the pentatonic shapes because they're a little bit easier to, to play and they're, they fit, they're less likely that you're gonna mess something up when you play in the pentatonics because they don't have these, as many half steps in it. So, and they also are quite useful for us to use the caged system to label the shapes because the open caged system uh, has three note or based off of three note uh, chords, but they fit uniquely. Those shapes fit uniquely into the five note pentatonic shape. They don't fit uniquely into the seven note shapes of the modes of the full modes because the same shape could fit it. The same chord could fit into multiple shapes. So therefore from a caged system, it's kind of useful to, to build things up from the caged shape to the pentatonic shape, naming the pentatonic shape based after the caged shape, and then adding the added two notes. So therefore, I'm trying to work into how I can view the guitar from the five note pentatonic shape and think about how we would then add the added two notes so that we can easily go from that five note shape to the seven note shape. And I'm going to make up a story about this. So this might be kind of convoluted and whatnot, but I think I'll refine it down as I practice. So we've got the hamburger shape and we've got the barbell shape. So I'm going to run these two stories together as we go through each of the intervals and go through each of the modes. And I'm going to d discuss each of the, each of the notes and each of the modes from the perspective of these two stories that I'm going to try to build. One is the house double stop, where do all the modes live? The other is the barbell hamburger, where do all the modes live? When you look at it from that perspective and which two notes are gonna be outside of the pentatonic, how can we tack them on to the barbell hamburger shape so I can easily move from a five note pentatonic to the seven note uh, major scale, which also be, the reason this, is kind of an issue as well is because this pentatonic shape fi fits perfectly into the aeolian and i'm sorry the, well yeah the aeolian which is the minor mode and the ionian major mode but when you go into the other modes it gets a little wonky because these other modes the two notes that are removed are important for those other modes so that's why it's a little bit wonky to see the pentatonic when you get into like modes but I think it's doable 
you know, I think that, so next time, tomorrow, I'll go into the door and we'll play with that more. But that's what we work on today. That's what I look into. Continuing on with what I would call position number two, this time looking at the major scale, otherwise known as mode one, the Ionian mode. The major scale being very important, not just because there's a lot of music that's gonna be written within the major scale, but because it's also the scale that we kind of use to orientate ourselves as we try to navigate going through different modes. For example, I compare this in a similar way to when we measure things from a physics perspective, we're gonna start from the point of Earth, of course, not because it's gonna be special in terms of special relativity, you could start from any other point to measure, but because that's where we happen to be and you have to orientate yourself somewhere in order to make sense of the surroundings. Similarly, when we start to look at these different modes and these different scales, you'll see that they're all kind of circular. They fit together kind of like a fractal pattern, which is great. The problem with that is that we need to find some kind of perspective in order for us to plant the flag and then view from that point to orientate ourselves. And in Western music, typically that's gonna be uh, the major scale, which is often called uh, the Ionian mode, or you can also call the Ionian mode. So what I'm gonna do, for example, is name the modes after uh, the major scale, which of course will be in order when we look at the major scale, but I'm gonna keep those relative numbering systems in the Roman numerals as we analyze other modes. Uh, and so you'll see how that kind of gets put together. So therefore, when we look at the major scale, it's useful for us to say, okay, this is gonna be the first through the seventh notes within the major scale, and then I can convert those to the first through the seventh modes and know the mode number, which I'm gonna assign absolute numbers, which will not change as well as the mode names when I go to the, the different modes and that'll help us to kind of orientate ourselves there. So that's gonna be really important. We'll take a look at the uh, intervals over here, the intervals also being really important for us to compare to other modes, this being more important for the major modes. And then we often compare the minor modes to the related uh, main minor, that being the Aeolian mode. So the, all of these intervals should make the most sense when looking at it from the perspective of the major scale because they were built basically off of the major scale as far as I can tell. So you got the perfect first, you got the major second, you've got the major third, four note away, major third. We've got the five note away, perfect fourth, the seven note away, perfect fifth. The two perfects are inverts of each other. We've got the nine note away, major six, and the 11 note away, major seven. So everything in the major scale is either gonna be major or perfect. And then when we compare it to its relative major modes, which would be the four and the five, otherwise known as the Lydian and Mixolydian, they will each have one uh, characteristic difference in terms of the intervals, which is the characteristic difference of those modes. When we look at the minor modes, we will typically compare them to the main minor, which is what I would call mode number six, the Aeolian mode. Okay, so we've been learning, I've been over here now, we're on position number two, and I'm naming my naming conventions different ways here. So a lot of people call, I call it position number two because I call this position number one. And then that naturally would mean that this would be position number two. A lot of people do that. That's a standard convention, although not everybody does. A lot of people will name it based on the caged system. And if I looked at the caged system, I have to be on the major scale really to do that and say, okay, well, where's my note that I'm gonna be playing here? It's gonna be the C. And if I played the uh, C major chord from that position, it would be an E major. So I could call this A, this whole shape, I could call it a basically uh, uh, a E major shape based on the cage system, even though I'm playing a C here. Now I might also just call it the major shape, right? I just could say, well, I'm starting from this point. This would be my main major shape because most of the time when someone wants to play a major, they're gonna find the note on the top two strings and then play the bar chord, which is gonna be an E major bar chord. So I could just call it that. Uh, uh, the, 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 the problem with calling it a major shape, however, is that if I build it from the pentatonic, you start on that note, but if, if I was doing the full shape, it would start on the B here. 
-hmm. And if you learn it that way, it becomes a problem because uh, the 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 B would be the Locrian shape. So so that's going to kind of throw you off. So we want to basically play the shapes from keeping an idea of what mode we're in. And from a naming convention, then I might just call it, I might also call it, I'm going to start to say it's uh, note two or note two uh, uh, major mode, meaning uh, I'm, I'm calling it, wait a sec. Yeah, note two major mode, meaning I'm looking at the position, mo <laughs> note two major shape or Ionian shape or mode number one shape. Meaning I'm trying to say, hey, look, this is the shape where the second note in the shape is where the major scale starts. And so that's another way I can kind of try to see it in my mind that I've been toying with to see if that helps me understand it. Now, also note, I'm trying to do something different here because I've been breaking down these shapes into, of course, the full shape. And then you can break it down into the pentatonic shape. You can break it down into the uh, the chord notes, notes within a chord. And we can also then, uh, the, the problem with the whole shape though, is if I play the whole shape and I learn it, I only learn the shape from top to bottom. And therefore when I play the bottom or maybe top to bottom and bottom to top, but that means when I start in the middle of the shape, I might get a little bit mixed up on, and I have to start from the top to the bottom to figure out what I'm playing just from a tectonic uh, fingering standpoint. So I've been trying to, we've been breaking the shape down into this shape, which I'm calling the house double stop, and then the double stop house, and then the two note per string, I would call meat of the hamburger because it ties into the pentatonic. And then down here, uh, is the top of the of the house double stop and we've come up with a story on that i think that's useful because i think this square is very prominent and it's easy to see that you're going to see that square and then behind it is the double stop and in front of it is the double stop so you end up with a five chunk when you break out the fretboard into chunks of four or five you're going to end up with a square double stop and you're going to end up with a double stop square and okay so that makes sense i think that's the, an easy way to kind of see it and it also tells you where the half steps are in your shapes but it doesn't tie perfectly into the pentatonic shape so when i do the pentatonic and, and a lot of people learn and i think it's a good way to do it you know is they we learn the the pentatonic first and then try to build on top of that the the two note extra for the major shape. So in other words, uh, the pentatonic has uh, the, the C, the D, let's make these right click, I'll make these green. Duh, duh, oh, wait, not that one. I'm gonna go here and say duh, duh. And then, uh, and then we're eliminating uh, the B and the F. So we have the E, and then we're eliminating the four, and then we eliminate uh, the seven. So let's take these two down. So this would be the pentatonic, which would be five notes out of the seven notes. So so if and a lot of people, if we learn that, you know, shape wise, and see it as the pentatonic, then how could I basically just expand that to the major scale? so I can see the major scale on it. Now, the reason this always kind of was a little wonky to me to do is because this pentatonic scale works beautifully for the major mode, the major scale, and with the Aeolian uh, scale, but doesn't work so well with the other modes because the other modes are gonna have a, a key component, the one, three, five, which make up the, the major note, you know, the major triad, is is not there's going to be a missing note in there right because one of the, these two notes that are important are going to be gone so but we can we can try to think of how we can augment augment the the pentatonic so when i broke out this shape remember the idea here and i know i'm kind of babbling I'm kind of this is practice session I'm thinking through this myself but when we do the whole shape we note that that we broke it out. There's really only five strings, right? Because this string and this string are repeated. 
So we basically broke this shape out into a, a two string shape, a two string shape, and then a one string shape. And then it repeats again with this shape is part of the two string shape, right? So, so we broke it into three shapes, two, two, one. Uh, we could break it into, and the hamburger, when I look at the pentatonic, it breaks it into a hamburger shape, which is shifted up because of the, because of the uh, kink in the tuning. So here's the full hamburger, and then it got shifted up to here. It has the hamburger shape, and then it has what I call the barbell shape, which we only play the outer notes of. So it's breaking the five strings out into a three string grouping and then a two string grouping. And that's why the two groupings don't really fit on top of each other beautifully uh, because, because of those two differences. So, so now let's say if I took this pentatonic grouping of what I'm calling the barbell and the hamburger, the barbell and the hamburger, and then we just add to it the notes that we need to to fill out the added two notes, where would those go? So if I played the barbell and the hamburger, it would be playing these two end notes, and then these two notes, and then these two notes, and then these two notes. So I can extend that shape by just saying the the added note that I have to extend is going to be on the bun of the hamburger. Top bun of the hamburger has an extended to the right. Bottom bun of the hamburger has an extension to the left. And the barbell is what I'm going to be calling a staggered handle, right? It's got a staggered handle shape, meaning in the middle where you'd hold the barbell has a staggered handle from the top to the bottom, right? So if I, if I memorize those shapes, then I can kind of more easily maybe think about the whole thing in terms of the pentatonic shapes and then just be able to easily add the two notes, again, breaking this whole basically five string thing, which has two of the same string, breaking that out from instead of a three three chunks of two and one breaking it out into two chunks of three and two all right so that's the idea so i know that's kind of wonky but i'll play i'm going to play with that as we go okay all right so let's go through our typical story here <clears throat> we're going to say okay where are my roots my roots if i'm talking about and and and, and i know this is a really messy shape i got all this stuff in here but bear with me i'm gonna it's gonna get better once i refine my thinking down or else i'll eliminate it but we'll say this is going to be here's my box and a double stop shape so within what we've been looking at before we said that of course the c is at the top of what i'm calling the house the box it's in the penthouse it's looking up towards the ocean this is our story to kind of be able to memorize where the shapes are and it's always there so if i go to this box it's still, see, this is part of the problem. I'm going to have to move these things, going to move around all the time. It's still going to be at the, to at the top here of the box. So it's always at the top of the box. It hangs out in its box at uh, <clears throat> the top of it. Now, if I looked at it in terms of this new, in terms of the pentatonic shape, where is it in terms of the pentatonic shape? It's on the left bottom of the hamburger, which I can see more clearly down here because here's the bottom of the hamburger, which is repeating. So it's on the bottom left bun. It's like the support of the hamburger. It supports the whole hamburger. And then it's on the right of the barbell. If I look at the, the, the barbell shape, which is the barbell because the two ends are what we play in the pentatonic and the middle is what I'm calling the handle of the barbell. And so uh, and so, and that, I think from this analogy, it's easy to remember the barbell consists of the major, uh, the main minor, and then the Phrygian, the two minor modes that are most used. And then on the other side of the barbell, the weights are the, the base weight is the C major, and then the, uh, and then the mixolydian, which are the two most used, in my opinion, uh, major scales. And then, and then the, the outcasts are in the middle, including the Locrian is going to be part of the barbell and, and then part of the hands of the barbell. And, and then we've got the Lydian. Okay. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> so, so let's, so then if I, if I was to say, okay, then 
let's cut this. I'm going to say control X control V. My pick is in the way. All right. So then if I say, let's just move up this shape and say, where are we within this shape and see if I can kind of get both of those in there. So we start at the top of what I call the, uh, the box, the box double stop, or you can say we're at the bottom of the bun of the hamburger, whichever way we want to look at it. And then we're going to go here. We go, we go, duh, 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 which means now we're at the bottom of what I call the house double stop, or in terms of our, our barbell hamburger shape, we're at the top part of the barbell and then we're going to do, do it. And then we're at now what I call the top of the double stop box shape do, do, do uh, the top of the double top stop box shape or the bottom of the barbell shape. All right. That's getting confusing. Are you sure this is worth it to do this barbell thing? It's going to work. I'm going to, I'm going to get better at this. I'm gonna, I could see it both ways. All right, here we go. We'll practice them both at the same time. All right, so if I was to count that up, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom, boom, uh, boom, 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 boom. There's our octave, okay? So then if I look at my, let's do this and say, let's do our intervals and just count up the intervals. And I'm going to say this is going to go from the, from the first to the second of a major scale is, of course, a major second. So that's going to be a major second interval, which is going to be a two note away major second. And so the inverse of that would be 12 minus two, which would be a 10 note away uh, minor seven. So if I go from this C to D like I normally would, two note away major second from D to C, uh, 10 note away minor seven. Remembering that if I have a major interval, the inverse of it would be the minor typically. And how can I prove that that is the case? If I go from this D here and I say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I get back to the C. Uh, I'm sorry, nine, t wait a sec. If I go from this D and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I get to the C. So if I, ma if I imagine it in a circle, then you can go one way or the other way is the general idea. Okay, and so then I'm going to say then let's go to, or let's do this as well. So if I go to the second of the Ionian, this, the normal numbering system, because that's number one, that's our key, the, the second will, of course, then be the second mode, which I'm saying that it's going to be the absolute second mode, which is the Dorian mode. And the uh, Dorian mode is a minor mode, uh, given the fact that it has a lower Roman case numeral. If I look at where it's located, the Dorian mode doesn't hang out in the house, in the penthouse of C over here in the box, but rather does its own thing because it's a minor mode hanging over here with the mixolydian. And uh, if I think about it in terms of the hamburger and barbell, the pentatonic, it is part of the pentatonic shape and it's at actually the corners of the hamburger. So if you see it down here, it's at the top bun, top left bun of the hamburger and the right bottom bun of the hamburger. That's where the Dorian is. It's all bun. It's, it's encompassing the meat from top to bottom. It's going top to bottom. That's how you could define the cell. We can define the hamburger with those two uh, notes. All right, let's go to the next one. We're going to go to the third of the major scale. Obviously, the third of a major scale is a major third, four note away major third. It's the defining characteristic of a major scale versus a minor scale that four note away major third, or the third will be the defining characteristic, a major being four notes away. And how can I count that? Because if I go from this C to that F, that's five, minus one is four. And what's the inverse? 12 minus four, which would be eight, 
which would be a nine, which would be an eight note away minor ninth. So uh, if I went from this C, if I see that shape, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a major third, unless it's in where the fault line is. And then if I go the other way, then E to C, I know that that is the inverse nine note away minor ninth. And the third of the mode number one Ionian is going to be, uh, is just going to be three, right? Cause I could just count up from one, one, two, three. It's the third mode, which is absolute mode number three. It's going to be the Phrygian, uh, mode. So it's the Phrygian mode. And where's the Phrygian mode located? Well, it's our minor mode because it has a lowercase uh, Roman numeral. It's in our house analogy. It's at the bottom in the basement because it plays like metal. I'm, I'm just making, I'm not sure metal always plays Phrygian, but it sounds heavy to me, that Phrygian. So he's playing metal and in the basement of the house. And he's always in the basement of the house playing the metal because he likes pissing off the Lydian mode because there's a thin wall between the two of them. But if you think about it in terms of my, uh, my barbell analogy, that's going to be building off of the pentatonic scale, the Phrygian or third is going to be in the barbell. It's the second most used uh, minor mode. And on the left of the barbell, you've got the main one on the bottom. That's the main minor, the Aeolian mode. And then above it is the uh, is the Phrygian mode. So that's where it hangs out on the barbell. It's also at the top right bun of the hamburger. So it's on the barbell and then type right, top right bun of the hamburger. Okay. So then I'm going to go to the next one and say, we're going to go to the fourth, the fourth of the major is going to be, of course, a five note away, perfect fourth. And how do I know that? Because if I just go from this to this, it's five notes away because there's five notes between the strings. And the inverse then is 12 minus five, which is seven. And so uh, that means that if I go, if I see that shape, I'm like, oh yeah, if I go from top to bottom, that's a perfect fourth, which is five notes away, five note away, perfect fourth. But if I went from bottom to top, inverse seven note away perfect fifth the perfects are inverts of each other the fourth of the ionian is the fourth mode because we're naming the modes numbering them after the ionian or major scale and that's going to be the lydian mode now the lydian mode is is the least used in my opinion of the major modes because on the major modes you've got uh you've got the major c of course and then the mixolydian, I think, is the second most used. So this is the least most used mode, in my opinion. Uh, some people might really like the lydian, and I'm sorry if that, but if I have offended your favorite mode. But where is it located? It's in the house. It's in the house, uh, on on under on the penthouse, looking towards the ocean. In our house analogy, where is it in terms of our pentatonic analogy? In terms of the barbell, it's not in the pentatonic scale. So these are the ones that we would have to add to the pentatonic scale, which kind of makes sense because again, the ones that aren't in the pentatonic are the Lydians been removed and basically the, uh, the Locrian, which makes sense, right? So that, so it's the handle, it's the handle of the barbell, which isn't what you really typically think of. So it's the left part of the handle of the barbell, the bars on the side, the other side of it is the right side of the top bun of the hamburger, meaning here's the top bun of the hamburger, which is a pentatonic shape. And then if we extend the bun has been warped and there's a bit of the bun hanging out towards the right, kind of like a baseball cap hanging off the right side of the hamburger towards the ocean over here. And that's this bit. Uh, and that's going to be the, the, the Lydian. All right. And then if I go to the next one, we're going to say that's going to be the fifth. So the fifth is going to be a uh, boom, boom. It's going to be the fifth of an, of a major scale is a seven note away. Perfect fifth, of course, as we would expect. And the inverse, I can see that because it'd be five down here, six, seven, the inverse 12 minus seven, which is uh, a five note away. Perfect four. So if I see that shape, that's my power chord. So, right. And so that's going to be a seven note away perfect fifth. But if I go, if I invert it from G to C, 
five note away perfect fourth the perfects are inverts of each other the fifth of mode number one ionian or major scale is the fifth mode which is a mixolydian which is the major mode given by the capital letter over here or capital number over here and uh wh where is it located well in our house analogy it's not in the box it's not in the box house it's doing its own thing even though it's a major mode and this is like c's house which is a major scale it it's still it's like i've got that that seven i don't hang out in the penthouse i've got the flat seven so it hangs out over here in the double stop with the minors with the dorian in this case what about our bell bell our pentatonic scale analogy if i see it in terms of a pentatonic that would be in our barbell so now it's in the barbell and it's on the left of the barbell is our our core minor the main minors which is going to be the main minor scale and the and the phrygian and then on the right you've got the most used majors of the barbell these are the two weights of the barbell the base of it being the major scale and above it being the second most used major scale that's kind of similar to the minors in that it has that flat seven and that's going to be the uh mixolydian and then and then it's also down here in the meat of the hamburger so when we look at the hamburger it's interesting to note that the meat of the hamburger includes the 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 right side is the main minor and the left side is the is the mixolydian which kind of makes sense if i try to think about it and say well a hamburger is kind of like the american hamburger is kind of like an american thing i think i feel like but and the and the and the and the bluesy scale here is kind of like so therefore that's the meat of the of the american hamburger right is right there and then it hangs out with the main minor down here in the meat of the hamburger because it also has that flat seven and those are kind of my two favorite scales on the minor and the major which are the meat of the hamburger right and that's the most important part because i mean i used to i used to not even eat the bun when i was a kid i'd eat the i just the bun's just there to hold the meat so you can just pull it out with your teeth and then eat the meat i don't do i don't do that because now people do that because of a diet i guess because they're on a carnivore diet but as a kid i just didn't like the bun and they always put gross stuff on i wasn't into the mayonnaise or or that you know so i had to you know wipe that get all that crap off of it and then but then put it back in the hamburger bun so the bun can hold it while i pulled the meat out with my teeth but in any case there's that all right let's go to the next one uh we're on the sixth so the sixth uh is gonna be back here and so that's gonna be the sixth of a major scale is gonna be a uh a nine note away major six so how do i know that because if i count down that would be five ten nine so uh if i see that shape and then what's the inverse 12 minus nine would be three three note away minor third so if i see that shape i'm like okay that shape unless i'm in the fault zone area is a nine note away major six inverse therefore is a three note away minor third and the sixth of mode number one ionian or major scale is of course mode number six which is the aeolian mode which is the main minor mode in our our analogy that hangs out in our oh i messed it up again that hangs out the main minor hangs out not in the box but not in like the house over here it hangs out in the double stop because the miners do their own thing man and it hangs out with the with the uh, Dorian, which is the other minor. In terms of our analogy for the pentatonic scale, the minor is at the bottom of the bars of, of our barbell. So it's on the left of the barbell. It's the base weight in the barbell uh, side of things. And in, in the other side is, is going to be in the hamburger. It's the meat of the hamburger because it's our favorite main minor mode hanging out with our favorite major uh mode which isn't the major scale even though that's like the, the what we build everything off of it's that mixolydian one and then we're going to go to the next one it's going to be uh to the b going to the b and so that's going to be from here to here to do it 
And so I'm going to I'm going to say the seventh of mode number one, uh, the uh, is <laughs> the seventh of a major scale is an 11 note away major seven. Uh, what how can I get there? Because I could just say that's going to be five, 10, 11, and then 12 minus 11 is one. Therefore, the inverse is a one note away minor second. So if I see that shape, I'm like, OK. <laughs> That's a funny sound in shape. That's a, actually a major seven, uh, and it's 11 notes away. If I invert it, <clears throat> that's going to be a one note away uh, minor second. And then the seventh of mode number one, Ionian, is mode number seven, is the Locrian mode, the crazy mode, the one we don't use that much. So you, where is it located? Well, in our, in our house analogy, it's in the house. And it's in like the attic behind the sea. It's the one that's in the attic that they don't use it quite as much. It's kind of crazy. You leave it, just leave it alone up there, okay? But uh, in terms of our barbell analogy, if, if I look at this one, where is it here? Well, it's not on the ends. We don't play it when we play the pentatonic. That's the shape that's been removed from the pentatonic, as you would expect, because it's the Locrian, the crazy Locrian shape. So it's been removed from the pentatonic. It's in the handle of the barbell. It's on the right side uh, of the handle uh, of the barbell. And then it's also in terms of our hamburger down here, it's outside of the hamburger. And it's like, it's where the bun has an extension. The bottom of the hamburger bun has an extension to the left. So, you, which is gonna be the, uh, the, this kind of distortion on the hamburger bun. That's got this extra bread over here on the left side of it which you usually just tear off and play the pentatonic, but it's there if you wanted to play it. All right, and then we're gonna go then back to the, to the major. All right, uh, <clears throat> then we're, let's do this uh, in reverse now. So we can do it in reverse. Let's go with a joke uh, before we do that. This is gonna be this is a terrible joke here, but I've been working on it. So. So you heard that's that's the final straw and that's the final straw that 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 deflated the hang, the camel's hump. Right? I think that's a better saying than that's the last straw that broke the camel's back because like imagery wise I think it's it's a better image it's more impactful to say that's the final straw that deflated the camel's hump, you know? Ca causing it to be as sa as saggy as a as a hev as a fat guy's second chin. It's got this poor camel's hump is sagging on the sagging like a second chin, and y and you can't be a good camel without a hefty hard hump. You know, I mean honestly, it, the the once mighty mighty hump now looks like a giant sagging cow teat, for crying out loud, sagging off the camel's back. What have you done to my camel with that last straw that deflated the camel's hump? The, the teats are supposed to be on the belly of the beast, not on its back. Poor thing, looks like it just left some kind of gender-affirming care clinic, crying out loud. You know, they, they, they made a new gender, apparently, which characteristically has one huge teat protruding from the dude ex's back I guess is what they did to my camel with by deflating my camel's hump like that on at, at least they didn't construct the new back teat by carving off the poor camel's left butt cheek but still I'm not a fan of this my this poor camel that I don't I don't care how many followers my camel has on TikTok with its new look you know I, although if if they do reinflate the hump with some silic with some silicone implant if they put some silicone implant back into the saggy camel hump that got deflated by the last straw the camel may be a little bit a little bit more comfortable to sit on you know it might be a little bit softer of a of a ride and that would be that would be nice that but i think the camel needs the hump 
uh, to hold water. I think there's like actual a functionality of the hump, so that might not be. So I'm guessing that a softer seat made from deflating the camel hump and then putting like silicone in it would come at the expense of limited distance travel between like water breaks, which, you know, there could be long distance, which is, you know, it's a big compromise when you're in the desert, which is usually when you're riding a camel, I would assume. Uh, but it might be a little bit more comfortable. So you have the trade-off there. Okay, I don't know. That, was, that wasn't a good story. I think I could make it funny, though. I wanted to make, make an AI image of a camel with a deflated hump. That would have made the story. It would have been funny if you saw the picture because AI could do it, I bet. But I don't have time for that stuff, man, because I'm learning intervals. Let's go back the other way this time. We're going, we're going backwards. So now we're going to start from C and bring it back uh, to the B. So if we just think about it, we're going to say, okay, if I start on, if I was up here, and then I go, do, there's the octave, and then I go backwards, I'm going to say, let's just think about the fingering of it. I would be here. So now I'm going boom. I'd be at the, in terms of, the double stop box, I would be at the top of what I would call the double stop box shape. In terms of the barbell shape, I would be at the bottom right of the barbell uh, shape. And then I'm going duh, 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 and then going up here. And then we're going to say now we're at what I would call the bottom of the house double stop shape. In terms of the pentatonic barbell shape, we're at the top uh, of the barbell. So then it goes duh, duh, duh. And then we're going down in terms of uh, this shape. This would be the top of what I would call the uh, the box. This is duh, duh, duh. The box double stop in terms of the hamburger barbell shape, the pentatonic shape. This would be the uh, bottom bun of the hamburger which had to be, which is right there, the bottom bun of the hamburger. And then I didn't have to extend it because we're not going back to that B. All right, so then let's do this and say, let's go this way and say, if I went from the seven uh, back, if I went from doo -doo, the seven uh, or eight back to the seven, we know that the seventh of the eight of the Ionian mode number one is an 11 note away major seven. How do I know that? Because the distance between these two is one and the inverse would be 12 minus one, which would be 11 note away major seven. So if I look at this, this normally I would go from the B to the C, which would be a one note away uh, minor second. But if I go from the C to the B, that's a 11 note away major seven, which I can prove by counting from the C up to the B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Proved it. So if it was a circle, you can go one way around the circle or the other way around the circle, whichever way you want to go. We're just going in circles, man. And that's cool. I'm doing my laps. I do my laps all day long. All right, so now we're gonna go and say that we're going back to the uh, the the sixth. So if I go back to the sixth of the major scales, a nine note away major six, and how do I know that? Because if I count this out, it'd be one, two, three, or if I count from the A, it would be three notes away, which would be a three note away uh, minor third, invert that, 12 minus three is a nine note away major six. So if I saw this shape, I usually would go from from the A to the C, duh, duh, three note away minor third, which means that if I go from the C to the A, it's the inverse, which is a nine note away major six. All right, let's go back to the fifth, back to the fifth. And that's gonna be doo -doo, right above it. So the fifth of a major scale is a seven note away perfect fifth. How do I know that? Because if I went from the G to the C, it'd be a five note away perfect fourth and 12 minus five is seven, which is a seven note away perfect fifth. So if I see that shape, usually I'm thinking from G to C, which is a five note away perfect fourth, but that means the inverse from C to G would be a seven note away perfect fifth because the perfect fifth, fifth the perfects are inverts of each other. Let's go back to the fourth. 
por favor. Going back to the fourth, uh, we know that the fourth is going to be a five note away perfect fourth because that's what it is on a major scale. How do I know that? Because if I went from the F counting this way, it would be five, six, seven. 12 minus seven is five, five note away perfect fourth. So if I see that shape, usually I'm thinking the counting from the F, which would be a power chord, seven note away perfect fifth. But if I the inverse therefore from C to F is gonna be a five note away perfect fourth because once again, the perfects are inverts of each other. You can't say one's perfect and not the other one. That doesn't make any sense, man. And I'm sick of stuff being told to me that don't make no sense, all right? Music makes sense. And so I'm gonna just stick with that and stop listening to people because people are trying to drive you crazy, man, with crazy stuff that don't make no sense. You can't, anyway, let's go back the other way. Now we're on the three, the, we're, now we're on the third which is uh, the third is a four note away major third. Four note away major third. How do I know that? Because if I count from the E, it would be five, six, seven, eight. That would be an eight note away minor ninth. Uh, and 12 minus eight would be four, four note away major third. So if I see that shape, I'm thinking uh, that's gonna be an eight note away uh, minor ninth. And then I can invert that, therefore, from C to E, would be a uh, four note away major third. All right, let's go to the second. Let's go to the second. Second is gonna be here. Da -da, uh, here. Da -da. So now I'm, I'm measuring from this one to the top. That's gonna be a two note away major second because that's what the second is on a major scale. How can I know that? Because if I count from the D, it would be five, 10, 10 note away minor seven, 12 minus 10 is two two note away major second. So if I see that shape, usually I count from the D, call that a 10 note away minor seven, but that means the inverse from C to D is a two note away major second, and that brings me back to the octave. All righty, Odie. All righty, Odie, Brody. Let's go, let's bring this down here and then do the bottom. So now we're looking at the bottom uh, part which if I if I was to kind of count it out, so I'm like, all right, so where where am I now? I'm gonna be uh we're gonna do so we're da, da, and then we're here and then we're saying so if I count this out, we're gonna start now at this bit and then down here you've got a C down here, which usually would be back one. You would expect this C to be back here, but because of the earthquake there's a kink in the tuning. These bottom two has been shifted up. That means we have this shape. Okay. Now, in terms of our counting up, uh, where where is this located? Well, it's at that root. Is at when we think about the double stop house. It's in the top right of the house again, because it's C's house, and that's the penthouse looking towards the ocean up here. But the C is also uh, the, 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 the right side of the bar for our pentatonic shape. Here's our barbell. It's the right bottom part of the weight of the barbell. And then the other side down here is in our hamburger. It's of course in the hamburger shape. It's within the pentatonic shape and it's the supporting left bun of the hamburger. It's the supporting left bun of the hamburger. Okay. So then, uh, so we go from the that to here. Oh man, I did it again. So it's hard to move this stuff around with all this stuff here. There's too much stuff. Okay. And then we're gonna go here, and then we go, then we go boom, boom, boom. So we went, so now we're at the, at the bottom of what I call the double stop house or we can say that we're at the top of the hamburger, top bun of the hamburger from a pentatonic perspective, where if I wanna add the extra note, I have to have the hamburger bun, the top bun of the hamburger, always have the extra note hanging off to the right uh, of it. And then we go down and we have to step up the, uh, uh, not that one. We have to step up the invisible curb 
because of the fault, because of the earthquake that happened. So we step to the right to go up the invisible curve. And that means we are, we're on the two note per string, the flat. This is the one shape that is the same, whether we break it out into the three, two strings, which we've been doing with the pentatonic, hamburger and the barbell, or in terms of the two, two, one, which is the house analogy and the flat here. So that means that this can be called the meat of the hamburger or the flat, the same shape, either one. And you can see it's the meat of the hamburger. And it's where the, on the right side, you've got the minor, uh, the main minor. And on the left, you've got the mixolydian. And you don't have to, you don't have to add everything, anything to the meat of the hamburger when going from the pentatonic to the major. But then down here, duh, 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 we go from here to here, duh, 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 and so now we're at, from the house analogy, we're at the house pentatonic. And from the hamburger barbell, we're at the bottom of the hamburger. So here's the bottom of the hamburger in purple. And we had to tack on this B to like the bottom bun of the hamburger. That's always going to be the case if you want to go from the five note scale to the seven note scale when we're thinking about it in terms of the, the hamburger analogy. <laughs> okay. Man, this is getting complicated, I know, but I'm gonna get better at it. It'll get better once I get my story down. So then, all right, let's go back here. So now we're gonna go here, then we're gonna go to the second. So the second of the major scale is a two note away, major second. Two note away, major second. I can see that by saying this would be five, four, three, two. I also know that from pinky to pointer is a whole step. So I can just see that that distance is a whole step or two notes away from pinky to pointer unless it's within the fault line between these two strings. Okay, and the inverse is 12 minus two, which is 10, which would be a 10 note away minor uh, seven. So if I see that shape, I can say, okay, yeah, that's a two note away, pinky to pointer two note away, which would be a major second. Invert it would be a 10 note away, uh, minor seven. The majors and minors are, if you have a major interval, the inverse will be a minor typically. All right, and then I also know, let's do this again. The second of the major scale, mode one, Ionian mode, is of course mode two, Dorian, and it's a minor mode indicated by the small Roman numeral where is it located? Well, in our double stop house analogy, it's in the double stop. When you look at the double stop house, it doesn't hang out in the house. And then uh, when you get to the, to the, to the uh, house double stop, it's at the top of the double stop part. When we look at our analogy for the hamburger and barbell for the pentatonic analogy or story or whatever you want to call it, it's at the top left bun of the hamburger. So the Dorian actually can be can define the hamburger space with two cells from here to here. So it's the top left bun of the hamburger, bottom right bun of the hamburger. All right, let's go to the next one. We're gonna go to the next one. Uh, we're gonna go to the third, and that's gonna be here. Uh, is that right? Yeah. So the third of the major scale, mode number one, Ionian, is of course the four note away major third. That's the defining characteristic, the third of whether it be a major or minor mode for the most part, except for the Locrian is its own thing, but it's kind of like a minor mode because it has a minor third. And so I'm gonna say that this is going to be then uh, a four note away minor. How do I know that? Because I can go five, four, four note away major third and the inverse 12 minus four is eight, which is an eight note away uh, minor ninth. So if I see that shape, I'm just like, oh yeah, that's a third if I measure from C to E, which means the inverse from E to C is going to be an eight note away minor nine. Okay, and then I can also see that the third of mode number one, Ionian, is the third mode, which is going to be Phrygian, which is a minor mode given by the lower case over here in our story. It's in the house, so it's in the box part of the house. So if it's in the house, it's always in the house, and it's in the basement 
because it's the it's the it's the rock and roll one. It's more minor than the minor mode because it has that that uh, flat second, otherwise known as a minor second. In terms of the pentatonic uh, story, it's going to be uh, it, it is in the hamburger here. We're looking at it in the hamburger. It's the top right bun of the hamburger, and it's also the top uh, of the barbell, top left of the barbell shape. All right, and so then we're gonna go, okay, let's go to the next one then. And so that's gonna be going from here, uh, the F, uh, uh, what, what, what am I doing here? I forgot where, what I was doing. So I'm on the C, and then I'm on the one underneath here. Okay, so that is gonna be uh, the fourth. So we're on the fourth. And that's going to be a five note away perfect fourth because that's what it is in the major scale and how do i know that because there's five notes between strings and inverse 12 minus five is seven seven note away perfect fifth therefore when i see that shape i'm usually thinking from c to f five note away perfect fourth but the inverse from from f to c is going to be a a uh seven note away perfect fifth and the fourth of the Ionian mode is going to be the fourth mode, which is Lydian. And the Lydian hangs out in the box in, in C's penthouse right under C because it's a major mode still looking at the ocean. With regards to our pentatonic hamburger barbell shape, it's not actually in the shape. It's next to the hamburger. So here's my hamburger shape. And then you have to extend the bun of the hamburger. So to go from a five note to a seven note, if you're looking at the pentatonic, you take the bun of the hamburger and add to the right of the bun of the hamburger. And that's gonna give you the least used, uh, in my opinion, major mode. It's the other side of it is in the bar in the middle, which is also the unused part of the pentatonic it's in the bar of the of the barbell shape which will it'll always be there if you if you think about the shape that way we'll try to prove that as we go through the modes here so then we're going to go to the next one uh and then we're going to say okay next one is going to go from the c to the g all right and that's going to be the fifth, which is a seven note away perfect fifth. How do I know that? Because I can go five here, and then I have to go up the kink in the tuning because there's the fault line there. There's a fault zone because of the earthquake. Ten, nine, eight, seven. So that's going to be a seven note away perfect fifth. Inverse then, 12 minus seven, five note away perfect fourth. So when I see that shape, I'm thinking, ah, that doesn't look like a perfect fifth because it should be back here. But no, it's up one because of the kink in the tuning so yeah that is a seven note away perfect fifth which means of course the inverse is a five note away perfect fourth and the fifth of mode number one ionian is mode number five which is mixolydian where does the mixolydian live well in our house analogy it's it's the one major mode that's not in the house because it's got that cool bluesy minor seven therefore hangs out in the flat with the main minor aeolian mode the minor scale in terms of our pentatonic hamburger barbell uh story then it's part of the pentatonic uh shape and it's in the meat of the hamburger which makes sense because it's kind of an american-y sound if you think of it as bluesy and it hangs out in the meat of the hamburger with the main minor and in terms of the barbell it's going to be the 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 on the right side of the barbell the right side of the barbell having the the most used two modes out of the three which is the base the c one and then the mixolydian being the second most used and the least most used being in the middle of course that uh is the lydian all right so then let's go to the next one and then we're gonna say the next one uh, is going to be going from the C to uh, this A to the A. Okay, and that's going to be the uh, 
the sixth, and it's going to be a, the sixth is a nine note away major six because it's a major mode. How do I know that? Because I can count down. That's five. And then because of the fault line, 10, and then back to nine. And inverse 12 minus nine is three, three note away minor third. Therefore, when I see this shape, I'm going, oh, wait a sec. That should be, shouldn't that be a 10 note away uh, minor seven? No, because of the fault line here. And so that actually is only a nine note away, which is a major six. So I see that shape. Oh yeah, that because of the fault line, nine note away major six. Inverse then, 12 minus nine, three note away minor third if I went the other way. All right, that makes perfect sense. Okay, let's go. And then we go to the seventh, which is the crazy Locrian Loco. All right, we're gonna go here to here. And that's gonna be an 11 note away major seven because it's in the major scale. How do I know? Because I count up here five, 10, wait, five. And then because of the fault line, 10 and then 15. 14, 13, 11. So 11 notes away, inverse 12 minus 11, which is one, which is a one note away minor second. So if I, if I see this shape, I'm like from here to here, that's an 11 note away uh, major seven. Now I think, well, shouldn't it be back here? Well, no, because of the fault line, it's up here. That means the inverse is a one note away minor uh, second. Okay, and also the seventh of the mode number one major scale is the seventh mode, otherwise known as the Locrian mode. And uh, the Locrian mode, where is it located? Uh, it's in the house. It's in, in our house double stop story. It's in the attic. It's in the top of the house where they don't go that much. But in our pentatonic story, it's in the hamburger, but it's not actually part of the hamburger. If you want to add it because it's the Locrian, it's not part. So that's the one that you have to add on. It's always added to the left bottom bun of the hamburger. It's basically supporting the C major, which is holding up the entire hamburger. And if you need that added support, you add that little bit to the bun on the left of the Locrian so that it doesn't fall off the plate, you just get a little bit more support because the meat seems to be a little left heavy. So you add a little support on the bun to the left. Okay, that's my story. So then I'm going to go back here and then we're back to the middle point. All right, let's do it in reverse. Uh, let's just do one more joke before we go back here before we go back the other way. No one's holding me back, man. I tell you what, no one's going to be holding me back unless they're, unless they're giving me back a massage. But, but uh, then, then they might be able to hold me back. But, but you know, to work out the kinks in, in me back. But once the kinks are worked out, you best let go because no one's holding me back, man. No one's holding me back unless they're giving me back a massage and I've okay anyways that wasn't good that was stupid let's go let's do this again let's go back the other way we're gonna go from this C back to the prior C and so we're here do do it and then we're gonna go here okay so now let's say we go back the other way and all right, so if we go back the other way, we're starting on what I would call the the uh, house double stop shape down here now. House double stop shape. We're at the top of the house, which you can't see the bottom of it because you only have the top part of it in terms of our uh, our pentatonic shape. We're at the the bottom left bun of the hamburger. So we start there and then we go do do back here. Now that of course repeats up top. So I can repeat that up top. So it's going to go uh wait, no, I'm not trying to repeat it up top. I'm just going to go up to here. And so then we go down to here. Let's just do this. We're not going around the horn right now. And then we go we go boom 
boom, which is going to be called what I would call the flat or the meat of the hamburger, the shape that is the same, whether we break it out into our house analogy or the hamburger uh, story. Anal is analogy the right word? It's an analogy? I don't know. I guess that word. I'm going to keep using it, I think. So hopefully that doesn't, that doesn't sound too stupid. Uh, we'll go here and then uh, we go up to, to here. Uh, so then we're going to go duh, duh, and then this is going to be duh, 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 which is going to be the double stop box uh, or if you uh, if double stop house or in terms of the of the hamburger analogy, we're at the top bun of the hamburger where we had to add a little bit to the right of the hamburger. If we want the seven note, you have to add that little bit of extra bun to the right of the top of the hamburger to get the seven notes from the five notes. And then uh, we go back up to the C here, which is gonna be at the top of our double stop box shape, or in terms of the barbell hamburger, it's at the right side of the barbell part. Okay, all right, makes perfect sense. Uh, if I count that out, this is gonna be Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, four, three, two, one. All right. So then let's do our, let's do our uh, intervals. I'm getting a little tired here, so I'm going to do this quick. I just think I'm just going to call it good after that. So let's say this is going to be, uh, if I go from the eight back to the seven, then I'm on the seventh, which I know is an 11 note away, major seven. How do I know that? Because the distance between these two notes is one, which would be a one note away, minor second, 12 minus one is 11. So if I saw this, normally I would go from the B to the C, one note away, minor second. But if I invert it, C to the B, that means that must be an 11 note away, uh, major seven. So then I'm going to go back and say, okay, let's go from the C to the A here, what is that? That's gonna be back to the sixth, and I know that the sixth of a major scale is a nine note away uh, major six, nine note away major six. How do I know that? Because if I look at this distance, it's, fi it's five, because there's no earthquake, no fault line. The fault line's between these two. So it's five, uh, four, three uh, here, and, I'll, and so five, four, three, that way, which would be a three note away minor third, and the inverse 12 minus three would be a nine note away major six. So if I see the shape, usually I'm measuring from the A and saying, oh yeah, that's a three note away minor third. That means the inverse must be a nine note away major six from C to A. And then let's go back to here. We're going back to the fifth. So the fifth is gonna be right above it. And that's gonna be the fifth of a major scale is the seven note away perfect fifth. How do I know that? Because if I measure from the G down, that would be five notes away, which would be a five note away perfect fourth. And therefore the inverse 12 minus five is a seven note away perfect fifth. So when I see that shape, I'm like, oh yeah, there's no fault line between these two. So that's the normal shape from G to C, which would be a seven, which would be a five note away perfect fifth. And therefore going from C to G would be a seven note away uh, no, going from, did I get that right? I always get the, this five, these two fives get confusing. So if I go from the G to the C, that's a five note away, perfect fourth. If I go from the C to the G, that's a seven note away, perfect fifth. All right, hopefully I got that right. Uh, let's go back then to here. So now we're going to do it, do it. And so we're on uh, this one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be then uh, the fourth, which is going to be a five note away, perfect fourth, five note away, perfect fourth. How do I know? Because if I count from the F, it'd be this way up the fault line, five and then 10, nine, eight, seven. That would be a seven note away, which would be a perfect fifth. 12 minus seven would be five, five note away, perfect fourth. So if I see this shape, if I measured from the F to the C, I'd say, hey, that looks like a perfect fifth, and that is a perfect fifth, and the inverse, therefore, is a five note away perfect fourth. Uh, yes. 
All right, and then let's go back again, and let's go to the third. The third is going to be the third of the major scale is going to be to do uh, where the third is going to be a four note away major third four note away major third. How do I know that? Because if I count up, this would be five because of the earthquake because of the fault line 10, nine, eight, that'd be an eight note away minor nine, 12 minus eight is four, four note away major third. So if I measured from the E, I'd say this to here would be an eight note away minor ninth, and therefore from C to E must be the inverse, which would be a four note away major third. Let's go to the second. Let's go to the second. And we're going from here now to here. That's gonna be a two note away uh, major second. How do I know? Because if I measure from the D, it would be five up to here and then 10, 10 note away minor seven, 12 minus 10 is two, two note away major second. So if I saw that shape, I'd say, okay, that shape, because of the fault line, it's shifted up, but I can see that. And I'm gonna say that's gonna be a 10 note away uh, minor seventh. And therefore the inverse must be a two note away major second. And that brings me back to home. All right. So I think this other way of seeing it, I'm a little, uh, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful on this because I think a lot of people actually see this shape by the pentatonic shape. And, uh, and so, so I'm going to keep on going with this analogy of, or seeing it in terms of a three, two string building off the pentatonic. And then we'll see how that, how well that works when we go to the other modes, it should hold up fine. And then for those people and myself that I, I kind of work from the major scale, but for the people, but it would be useful to see the pentatonic and then just add the two notes to the pentatonic, which I think you can do even if you're working uh, on a scale other than the major and the minor. And that'll help us also to define all of the shapes in terms of the in terms of the caged system, which because each of the each of the of the open position shapes fit uniquely into the five note pentatonic shape, even though there's only three notes in each of the chords, but they don't fit uniquely into the seven note shapes. So if you use the caged system, it's designed to, la to label the shapes, the five shapes that are actually made of five notes uh, after those shapes, which will fit. And then we can add the two notes to it uh, using just basically using the, the add-ons. So I think that has potential so I think to see it both both ways is still useful, but I'm going to try to add that on. So next time we might go to the Dorian and I'm going to move up the shape maybe because I think we went around the horn and look at it in open position and in position 12 up here. And I'll see if I can analyze the Dorian while using the pentatonic shape even though I'm looking at a Dorian mode, if that makes any sense. And hopefully we'll play with that tomorrow.